Nowadays, most of the trade in the world passes through the oceans and the seas. But despite our oceans being more trafficked than ever, they remain, for the large part, a complete mystery. The oceans are so vast and so deep that only about 5% of the Earth's oceans have been explored and charted, especially the ocean below the surface. With that in mind, there are millions of things yet to discover that we may not be equipped to understand yet. From one of the world's oldest cities to a mass watery graveyard that no expert has been able to explain, here are the 20 most terrifying things recently discovered underwater. Number 20. SS Thistlegorm when a ship sinks to the bottom of the sea, marine life immediately starts to form all around it. In fact, shipwrecks have become quite an important part of several ecosystems all over the world. The SS Thistlegorm wreck is considered as one of the best dives in the whole world due to the abundant and mesmerizing marine life that has moved in, so to speak. The ship was a proud vessel that served during the Second World War. It sunk in 1941 after a German raid in the north of the Red Sea in the Straits of Gubel, between Egypt's mainland and the Sinai Peninsula, where it remains to this day. The vessel was bound for Egypt. She was delivering desperately needed war supplies for the British Eighth Army in northern Africa. At this dark point of the war, the Allies lost control of the sea and the skies over the Mediterranean. The Germans and the Italians virtually controlled the entire area. That's how such a magnificent boat was taken down. Today, its diverse and spectacular marine life includes the daily presence of batfishes, a famous resident turtle, barracudas, snappers, and several schools of jacks. But the SS Thistlegorm wreck is not only a huge attraction for its amazing residents, but also for the enormous amounts of World War II artifacts that are still there for everyone to see. Ranging from locomotives and tanks to army trucks and jeeps, there are so many things to see that it actually takes more than one dive to appreciate the whole wreck. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the star topic. There's a legend among the Vikings that there's a giant race of blue humanoids that live in the deep, freezing waters of the Arctic. By any means, this legend may refer to mermaids, but nobody believes in mermaids anymore, right? Well, a former Navy officer tells us what he saw while diving in the Arctic, and it'll make you reconsider what you think is real and what isn't. This retired Navy SEAL officer is now speaking out about what he saw on a dive in the Arctic. And it was a giant man with a skull for a face that appeared for only a second before disappearing back into the depths of the ocean. Apparently, the creature was about 65 feet long and it didn't appear aggressive. More than anything, it was just trying to hide from the humans at all costs. Do you think there could be a race of aquatic giant humans hiding under the freezing waters of the Arctic? Comment down below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. The Lost City of Mahabalipuram a group of experienced Indian divers sent by the Archaeological Survey of India found yet more evidence of an ancient port city after the Indian Ocean tsunami. According to the diving expedition, several stone structures that are seemingly man-made were exposed on the seabed off the south coast of the country after the Indian Ocean tsunami hit the region in 2004. Researchers and historians claim that this could very well be part of the mythical city of Mahabalipuram. Legend has it the city of Mahabalipuram was so breathtakingly beautiful Beautiful and full of riches that the gods got jealous and sent a flood that engulfed six of its seven spectacular temples. The seventh temple is still standing in the mainland. When the Indian Ocean tsunami occurred, the waves were so unbelievably strong and powerful that they washed away the sand from the site, thus exposing the ancient city for the first time in centuries. The Archaeological Survey of India immediately launched the diving expedition after some local people from the Tamil Nadu coastline reported seeing what they thought was a temple and other structures as the sea pulled back just before the tsunami hit the area. Among the relics and ruins found, there's a lion statue from the 7th century. 
Scientists now want to investigate the possibility that the city of Mahabalipuram was submerged underwater following the last ice age. If this theory proves correct, it means the settlement is over 5,000 years old. Number 18. Black Smoker Stacks did you know that the sea floor has vents? I mean, sure, they look nothing like the vents in a building, but they pretty much function the same way. These ones are called black smokers, and they are a type of hydrothermal vent typically found on the sea floor. They are often referred to as underwater geysers, and they get up to 180 feet tall. But black smokers are not only impressive for their height, they are also remarkable because they are considered to have the highest temperature of all hydrothermal vents. And by hot, I mean insanely burning hot water. Hot. The molten hot magma heats up the water and pushes it up through the vent. The average temperature of the water around a black smoker is around 750 degrees Fahrenheit. When the sulfide from the molten hot lava hits the cooler seawater, it burns the water, which creates the cool underwater smoke effect. With these kinds of crazy temperatures, you would think no life could ever survive in such conditions, right? Wrong. Black smokers are surrounded by hundreds of different little creatures that have evolved to take on such intense temperatures like little champs. Number 17. 87 World War II Mortars Found at Calshot Beach Finding items from World War II isn't uncommon, but this time it's quite an unusual amount and scale of ordnance. A total of 87 unexploded bombs have been found on a Hampshire beach in southeast England on the coast of the English Channel. The mortars were exposed on the beach by a combination of unusually low tides and extremely high atmospheric pressure. According to Royal Navy bomb disposal expert Lieutenant Commander Al Necruz, a finding of this scale has never happened before in the area. The 87 mortars, which each measured about 4 inches by 20 inches, were dealt with by a five-man team from the Royal Navy's Southern Diving Unit 2. They decided to stack the bombs about 980 feet offshore at low tide and then destroy them at high tide. Now, of course, a 3,280-foot exclusion zone was set up around the mortars for everyone's safety. This incident is so unusual that some people went so far as to blame it on the supermoon that occurred in March 2011. One thing's for certain, though, there might be more unexploded mortars in the area, so if you live near Hampshire, be careful if you go out for a swim. Number 16. Baltic Sea Anomaly if you're a UFO chaser, this one's for you. The Baltic Sea Anomaly is a bizarre feature on the floor of the Baltic Sea that was discovered by a team of Swedish treasure hunters called the Ocean X Team. Recently, an hour-long radio interview with Peter Lindbergh, head of the team, resurfaced where he delivers a mysterious string of very cryptic and titillating statements about the unique and unidentified object on the sea floor. The anomaly has a very strange set of stair formations, which could suggest that it is, in fact, a construction and not a normal occurrence. But if it was built by someone, it must have happened before the Ice Age, which was about 20,000 years ago. Lindbergh went on to say that if the anomaly is a relic from the lost underwater city of Atlantis, it would certainly be an amazing discovery. Although he acknowledges that the object could very well be a natural formation like a meteorite or an underwater volcano, he gives the impression that even scientists are completely baffled by it. He claims that a few geologists have told him personally that the anomaly cannot be a volcano. The location of the Baltic Sea anomaly has not yet been disclosed, but nonetheless, it's spurring quite the commotion on the internet, especially in the UFO enthusiast community. Since the object seems to be isolated from any other structure, some people are convinced that this could be an alien spaceship that for some reason malfunctioned and crashed into the Baltic Sea thousands of years ago. Number 15. Thonis Heraklion Thonis Heraklion are the Egyptian and Greek names of a lost city that exists both in myth and in reality. Legend has it, before the foundation of Alexandria in 331 BC, Thonis Heraklion knew glorious and plentiful times as it was the only and obligatory port of entry for Egypt for any and all vessels coming from ancient Greece. This magnificent and extremely rich city also had a very deep religious importance because of the Temple of Amun, a deity that played a crucial role in rites associated with dynasty continuity. Historians put the foundation of Thonis Heraklion around the 8th century BC. They also believe that the city underwent a series 
series of catastrophic natural disasters, causing it to sink entirely into the depths of the Mediterranean Sea sometime during the 8th century AD. This city had remained a mystery, a legend, and a myth up until the year 2000, when the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology, directed by Frank Gaudio, finally found traces of its existence. The team were able to locate, map, and excavate the long-lost city, which is located about six and a half kilometers off today's Egyptian coastline. The objects recovered from the excavations confirmed the story of a city made of beauty and glory, the magnificence of their grand temples, and the abundance of art and valuable objects they had. Number 14. Ghost Fleet of Truck Lagoon a lot of tragic loss of life occurred during the Second World War in the hand of the Axis, but here in the Caroline Islands in the South Pacific, it was actually the Allied bombers who were the ones that rained destruction and devastation on the beaches. The three main countries of the Axis were Germany, Italy, and Japan, and during World War II, the lagoon was host to Japan's Imperial Fleet. In the wake of Operation Hailstone, often referred to as Japan's Pearl Harbor, this place was left completely decimated and destroyed. As a result, today, hundreds of Japanese these aircraft and other military machines remain at the bottom of the lagoon, making it one of the finest World War II wreck dive sites in the whole world. The Caroline Islands were once part of the Spanish West Indies. It was the famous Magellan who explored the area. Later on, Spanish merchants and missionaries came to visit and stayed due to the perfect conditions for housing. The low coral islands are surrounded by an impressive, sheltered reef, which makes this place something of a paradise for foreign settlers. Many of the Japanese World War II wreck are visible through the shallow, crystal-clear water, which means that this is not only a historically amazing dive, but also a fairly accessible one. Number 13. Great Blue Hole Belize is known for its paradisiac beaches and its gorgeous and lush jungle. But Belize is largely known for its scuba diving sites, and in particular, the star of the show, so to speak, the Great Blue Hole. This is a world-class destination for recreational scuba divers. If you enjoy diving in crystal clear waters while looking at a myriad of species of marine life, this would be the place for you. From spectacular coral formations to millions of different kinds of tropical fish, this place is going to feel like a party for your eyes every second of the way. But of course, every rose has its thorns. Like in most tropical waters, there are also loads of sharks here. You could easily run into nurse sharks, giant groupers, Caribbean reef sharks, and the almighty black tip shark. But if you don't mind swimming alongside fish with massive teeth and a taste for flesh, the Great Blue Hole is truly an amazing sight to see. It is an underwater sinkhole that lies near the center of Lighthouse Reef. It's over 984 feet across and 410 feet deep. It is, in fact, the world's largest natural formation of its kind. Today, this place is a part of the Barrier Reef Reserve System, which is a World Heritage Site of UNESCO. Number 12. Train Wreck Under the Sea off the coast of Long Beach in New Jersey, there's a very mysterious wreck that has historians and experts completely baffled as to its history. The wreck lies in 99 feet of water, and it's not the kind of wreck you're thinking of. It's actually two steam locomotives that were just sitting there for over a hundred years before they were even discovered. In 1985, a scuba diver named Paul Helper was mapping the ocean floor armed with a magnetometer and a wetsuit. When he approached the site, he obviously got two major signals on his device, which meant only one thing. There was a massive metallic object somewhere around. But Helper understood quite quickly that this was not your ordinary wreck site. For starters, there was no sign of any kind of debris from a ship, and there were, on the other hand, two huge locomotives resting proudly on the silty bottom. And just like that, the mystery of the train wreck under the sea was discovered. From that day on, railroad aficionados have excitedly examined photographs of the site, counting wheels and peering very closely at the remains of the smokestacks, looking for anything that could offer them any kind of detail as to the train's origins. But to no avail. This is just one of those inexplicable things found underwater that will likely never be solved. Number 11. Ice Finger of Death a brinicle is basically a finger-like formation that grows underneath sea ice, also known as the Ice Finger of Death. We've known about their existence for quite some time now, but recently, for the very first time ever, the formation process of a brinicle has been captured on camera. This rare phenomenon only happens in very specific conditions in the polar regions of planet Earth. A brinicle can only occur when the sea ice cracks and leaks water with less salt in it than seawater. The relatively fresh water of the ice freezes more quickly than the ocean water around it 
it due to the fact that it's less salty. Therefore, it creates a finger of death that freezes impressively quickly everything it touches, including marine creatures and algae. Think of a fast-growing upside-down column of ice in the middle of the ocean. Rhinicles were discovered in the 1960s, but they've rarely been observed in real time because of the remote locations in which they happen. And they seem to be quite rare, considering that none of the bottom-dwelling creatures have evolved to recognize the danger they pose. Number 10. Giant Mysterious Eyeball Perhaps reminiscent of the infamous Montauk Monster, another bizarre thing is washed up on a Florida beach. But this time, it's not the carcass of an entire animal, only a gigantically massive eyeball. Where else could this happen aside from Florida, right? As if they needed anything else weird to happen there. At first glance, the giant eyeball looks an awful lot like the giant squid eyeball that you can see on a behind-the-scenes tour of the Smithsonian. But it would seem that that's not the case here at all. According to news reports, the mysterious eyeball washed up on Florida's pump Pompano Beach, where a horrified beachcomber found it. Thankfully, instead of chucking it back into the ocean, he instead contacted the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, and they immediately came to retrieve the eye. They put the softball size eye on ice and sent it to the Fish and Wildlife Research Institute in St. Petersburg. Later that week, their spokesperson, Carly Siegelson, told NBC News that they would use genetic testing to determine what species the eye belonged to. But the fact that there appears to be bones around the eye rules out the giant squid. What do you think it could be? Number 9. Underwater River in the Black Sea did you know that undersea rivers exist? There's only one known to mankind so far, and it's called the Black Sea Underwater River, and it's a saline water current that flows through the Bosphorus Strait in northwest Turkey and along the seabed of the Black Sea. The discovery of this bizarre river was announced quite recently on August 1st, 2010, by a group of scientists at the University of Leeds. This announcement was very important because the Black Sea River is the first of its kind in the world. This curious undersea river stems from salty water spilling through the Bosphorus Strait from the Mediterranean Sea into the Black Sea, where the water has a significantly lower salt content. The two different densities of the two bodies of water create a unique flow of water within a sea, ergo an undersea river. The team of scientists used a 23-foot-long torpedo-shaped autonomous underwater vehicle to study the river's behavior, and they found it to be 37 miles long, up to 115 feet deep, and 0.6 miles wide. This undersea river carried 10 times more water than than the Rhine. It flows at a speed of 4 miles an hour, with 78,000 cubic feet passing through per second. If this river was at the surface of the Earth and not under the sea, it would have ranked as the sixth largest river in the world. Number 8. Elongated Skulls and Mythical Underwater Mayan Cave there's a sinkhole in southern Mexico that has long terrified local villagers. But recently, a group of underwater archaeologists was brave enough to explore it. What they found down there will blow your mind. When the archaeologists descended into the cavern, they found the place littered with bizarre, elongated skulls and human bones. Yet no wonder the locals were so scared of it. The underwater cave is known as Sacoyum, and it is a cenote located in the Yucatan Peninsula. A cenote is a natural pit that results from the collapse of limestone stone bedrock, thus exposing groundwater underneath. Cenotes like this one were sometimes used by the ancient Mayans for sacrificial offerings. Sakoyum sits just outside the ruins of the ancient Mayan city of Mayapan, which was a major political center from the 12th to the 15th century AD. The city was enclosed within a stone wall for protection, and within the city walls there were about 40 cenotes. Not only were they used for religious purposes, they also served as a vital source of drinking water for the 17,000 residents. Some historians believe that they actually built the city in this particular place because of the large amount of cenotes present. Legend has it, Sakoyum is guarded by a feathered, horse-headed serpent. Some people have seen this creature perching in a tree, leaping up, spinning about three times, and going back into the water. This is the reason why local people refuse to go anywhere near the Cenote. Number 7. Yanaguni Monument An underwater pyramid off the coast of Japan. How cool is that? The island of Yanaguni is the westernmost island of Japan. In the 1980s, it was already a very popular dive site for divers looking to experience swimming with hammerhead sharks. Already a pretty cool dive site. But it wasn't until 1986 when Kihachiro Aratake discovered this incredibly strange-looking monument. 
straight away, he nicknamed it the underwater Machu Picchu. Sitting only 5 meters below the surface, it's believed it was constructed around 10,000 BC in the Ice Age. Since the discovery, there's been a lot of debate as to whether it's man-made or formed naturally. What do you think? Surely it looks too perfectly angled not to be man-made. Look at all the different constructions and engravings. It's beautiful. Professor Masaki Komoda believed it was made of layers of sandstone and mudstone. They even found stone tools and artifacts and tablets with engravings. Could this be the Japanese Atlantis? The whole city, for lack of a better word, has a pyramid, arches, steps, stadium terraces, and a pool. Most people tend to believe that it's a natural monolith carved into a city by a man. Archaeologists and scientists continue to debate. Whatever it is, it is again proof that the underwater world has a lot more to be explored and teach us about history. Mind-blowing stuff. Number 6. Purple Orb Imagine a group of scientists fighting a crab to get hold of a mysterious purple orb that was found off the coast of California. I know, it sounds like the plot for a comical sci-fi movie, but it actually happened. More than 5,000 feet below the surface of the ocean within an undersea canyon, the purple globular creature appeared to glow under the submersible's lights that the scientists had. One of the researchers asked what it was, to which the other one replied, I'm stumped. I have no idea. I can't even hazard a guess. Are we gonna grab it? A third asked. Well, unless the crab gets it first. And of course, the crab did get it first, and he would not let go. They had to really fight for it as the crab clung steadfast in one place and refused to move an inch. The disco ball looking specimen was eventually transferred from the depths of the ocean to the waiting ship above. There, they discovered that the mysterious orb sort of unfolded into two folds. It revealed a foot and rhinophores, which are ear-like structures. That's when it became clear that the little lumpy ball was a gastropod of some kind. They believe it's probably a variant of a sea slug, which are mollusks that crawl with the help of a single foot. Mollusks are quite a funky species. They include a vast variety of brightly colored species that either fly, dance, or swim to move around through nearly all levels of the oceans. Number 5. A shark statue is located underwater in Lake Nucatel, Switzerland. In the deep waters of Lake Nucatel, there is a terrifying statue that'll definitely make the hairs of your neck stand up. Remember Bruce, the gray white shark from the movie Finding Nemo? Well, now imagine a full scale sized statue in the middle of a lake that looks kind of exactly like Bruce, only even more terrifying if that's possible. The statue is obviously a joke, as no kids will ever be able to actually see it. But for the non-attentive or innocent diver, there might be a little heart attack waiting for them at the bottom of this lake. I mean, take a look at those enormous sharp teeth, evil black eyes, and the terrifying cruel grin. Thankfully, there's a little sign right next to the shark, you know, just like the statues of a museum. But in comparison to the gigantic shark, that little sign looks like plankton. Number 4. Spanish Galleon San Jose This immense vessel, called the San Jose, was a 64-gun, three-masted galleon of the Spanish Navy. It first sailed the seas in 1698, and it eventually tragically sank off the coast of modern-day Cartagena in Colombia in 1708. At the time it finally sank into its watery grave, the San Jose was laden with gold, silver, and emeralds that the Spanish Navy was taking from Latin America back to mainland Spain. The entire treasure was thought to be worth about 17 billion US dollars as of 2018. The shipwreck was located by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute in November 2015, and since, a massive polemic ensued as to who was the rightful owner of the riches, the Spanish government, the Colombian government, or the institution that found the sunken ship. There were good arguments for each side, but at the end of the day, even though the ship was Spanish, it was carrying stolen treasure from what was back then a colony. And the ship is still today on Colombian territory. Therefore, after a lot of deep and heated discussion, a salvage operation managed by the Colombian government took place. Number 3. Shemshug Canyon Welcome to the deepest submarine canyon in the whole world. 
Not only is the Shemshug Canyon the deepest, but it also tied for the widest. And it's located right in the middle of the Bering Sea, which is a marginal sea of the Northern Pacific Union. The Bering Sea divides the two largest land masses on Earth, Eurasia and the Americas. It's only appropriate that the deepest, most inaccessible and remote underwater canyon would be there. The Shemshug Canyon has a vertical relief of 8,530 feet, making it a lot deeper than the Grand Canyon. Deep, cold, and oxygen-rich waters well up from the depths of the canyon, which provides sustenance to an enormous array and vast variety of life forms under and above the water's surface. The endangered short-tailed albatross, for instance, congregates to feed over the surface waters of the Shemshug Canyon. Without this food source, they would have gone extinct a long time ago. Number 2. The Turtle Graveyard the Pacific Ocean is not only the largest ocean in the world, it's also home to some of the most awe-inspiring and mysterious places as well. One of them is the recently discovered Mass Turtle Graveyard buried deep beneath the waves in the state of Sabah, Malaysia, underneath the island of Borneo. Past the kaleidoscope of the vibrant coral reef, there's a network of underwater caves. And inside the mesmerizing labyrinthine tunnels, about 60 feet below the ocean's surface and roughly 200 feet into the land mass of the island itself, lays the mysterious turtle graveyard. The cave harbors dozens of turtle fossils, some of which are stillborn. It was Jacques Cousteau that discovered this place, but nobody's been able to explain why or how so many turtles perished in this exact spot. This bizarre and eerie boneyard is the only one of its kind in the world, and there's no apparent explanation to its existence whatsoever. Number 1. Pavlo Petri, the world's oldest underwater city. Did you know that a revolution occurred roughly 6,000 years ago in ancient Greece? Well, as it seems, revolutions are not a new thing in history, not by a long shot. But this wasn't the bloody type, it was in fact an urban revolution, much more productive and much less destructive too. Basically, ancient Greeks decided that instead of continuing to form random settlements all over the place, they started to create more structured and planned communities. And this is how cities were born. And in the Greek Peloponnese, you can still see the ruins of a city that's believed to be one of the oldest in human history. And that is so impressive. And this city was quite advanced, too. They had pipes lining the streets, running water, and even a sewage system. The homes of the rich had two stories with roof terraces. I mean, this place was amazing. They had residential neighborhoods with gardens, a harbor with many warehouses, government buildings for administration, and much more. Pablo Petri was able to build all these awesome things because it had a lot of wealth derived from its weaving and pottery industries. It was also an obligatory stop for ships coming and going from Crete. The city eventually sank under the Mediterranean waters, but it was discovered in 1967 by Nicholas Fleming, a famous oceanographer. As you can see, the oceans and seas of our planet are far from boring. We have so much yet to discover. Imagine what else could be laying under the water. In your opinion, what could be the next big underwater discovery? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.